There, this is Mike, and what I want to do is I want to show you how to take a regular document um, and mark it up with the HTML language to create a web page. Um, what I have here on the left hand side, I have used, I'm using Notepad to mark up my document. You can use any type of text editor, and there are a variety of other editors out there, but for this class and for what we're looking at, we're just going to concentrate on using a simple text editor. If you happen to be on a Macintosh, then the text edit would work for you. And um, on the right hand side I have my browser set for Internet Explorer so I can actually go in and see any of the changes. And here's a little tip. Whenever I make any changes what I'll do is I'll put the text editor to one side and I'll put the browser to another. And when I make a change I refresh the browser to go in to see the changes automatically. So that's a little tip there um, because I like to see the changes as I go. And as you can see here on the left hand side, I, all I have is a simple text and I saved it with, as a HTML document. And when I open it up in the browser, you can see that the text is all, there's no paragraphs, there's no spacing, not like what we have over here on the left where the notepad is. And the reason is, is that you have to mark up your code, you have to mark up your document so the browser knows where those paragraphs are. You know, just because you press return key on your keyboard does not indicate to the browser. The browser doesn't know that you pressed return. So you have to actually put the code in for the browser to interpret what you want that text to look like. So we, a lot of times we're just under the assumption because when you work in Microsoft Word, we press return, we get a separate paragraph. You know, we can go in and highlight text and click on the bold button and it makes the text um, uh, more, and brings more emphasis to the text. But that's not with the coding. The coding, you actually have to put the tags in to tell the browser you want this text to be bold. Or you want to change the color. You have to put the information in. So we're kind of going back and we're just basically, it's called a markup language and the reason is, is because you're taking every little text, every little paragraph, and you're putting tags in front and at the end. Now the first thing we're going to do, let's go in and we'll make some changes here to get this into a proper coding. So the first thing we want to do is at the top, we always put in, I'm just going to press my return key on my notepad, I'm going to put in a doc type tag. Now I have over here uh, a website that has a whole list of doc type tags and, and basically if you go up to w3schools.com you will have a list of a whole list of doc types. Now what is a doc type? It's really something that's needed for this new version of HTML and, and when you're working with X HTML and it allows the browser to determine what type of coding you have. Or is the coding geared for older browsers? Is it geared for newer browsers? And when you're working with XHTML and, and the new version of 5, um, what happens is it's more case sensitive when you type in your tags. So you want to try to keep everything in lower case. And if you, if you go in and you work with the doc type, it will know that is the case. So what I do here is, you know, you don't have to remember how to type it in. You just go to one of these sites and you copy it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the transitional one, which tends to be more useful, especially when you have a, a site that's already been existingly created. Um, if you're starting a new site from scratch, I would suggest using the strict one, which basically says everything has to be in lower case, everything is case sensitive. You know, so if you go in and type something and you forget it quotations, then it won't recognize the code. So it's very particular. So I'm going to just, I just did a control C to copy. I'm going to do a control V as in Valentine to paste. And I'm just pasting the information right up here at the top. That always goes at the very top of your page. No matter what web page you're creating, you're always going to have it. Then you're going to add these tags and we're going to put them with the greater and less than symbols on your keyboard. So we always start off with the HTML tag. This indicates to a web browser that we have automatically a web page. So when it sees this little tag, it automatically goes in and it indicates to us that it is a web page itself. And notice the less than symbols and the greater than symbols here. Those are needed 
whenever you have a tag. So you have to have them in those little brackets. Now the other thing is, is once you go in, you put a tag in, and if you're following the, the strict guidelines of XHTML and the new versions of HTML that's out there, every opening tag has to have a closing tag. And basically a closing tag uh, is going to be at the end of, if it's the end of the section, or in this case, it'll be at the end of the web page. I'm going to come down here at the very bottom. I'm going to put in my lesson symbol. To indicate a closing tag, we put in a forward slash, and then we type in the name of the tag, followed by the greater, sim greater sign. So what we're doing here is if you have an opening, you're going to have a closing as well. And up here at the top, we usually also have another feature, another option, where we go in and we create what we call as a head tag. Now, what happens within the head tag, what happens, the browser will view a certain information, and you can think of it as like a header section, a header section. So what's going to happen here is the browser looks what's in the header section and brings out certain information. So some people will put in what we call our meta tags. And in these meta tags, you'll have keywords for your search engines. So if someone types in a certain word, then hopefully your website will come up toward the top. And you know that's something we'll learn a little bit more later as we're working with this. Um, another feature that we like to put in the head tag is the title of our page. And that title of the page is going to be up on our title bar. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a title right here. I'm going to put in a opening tag of a title. Again, notice I'm using the brackets. And then at the end, I'm automatically going to put in a slash title. Got to remember to put in the closing tag. Got to remember to put the closing tag in. Now, just because you know I have the opening head, so now you got to think to yourself, where's the closing head tag going to go? It's going to go right here. So we have a little separate section. And again, what anything that's in the head tag will not be shown on your page. Will not be shown on your page. So it's things that's in the background that's going to be kind of like running, uh, almost like invisible to what they will see on the web page. So we'll add some more things to that in a little bit. So the next thing, the next basic structure that we have, once we took care of the heading section area, what we need to do is we have to have the content set up correctly. And we always have the main content on the page within what we call the body tag. So I'm going to put the body tag in. Then anything below this is going to be on our main page information. So if I go back here over to the browser on the right hand side, so anything that's on my page here that's this white background, that is the main page, our body information. So I'm going to also come all the way down. I'm going to put a closing tag in. Again, you have, if you have an opening, you must have a closing. So again, all we're doing is we're marking up our document with tags. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go do a file save. Then I'm going to come over here to my browser. I'm going to click on the refresh button up here. It's a little two blue arrows. If you press F5, F5 will do the same thing. The only thing, you're not going to notice the difference to the body text yet because we haven't done anything to it. But I do want you to notice up here on the title bar, notice that the title bar at here to the top says A Princess of Mars by Edward Rice Burroughs. So that's where the title is going to go. It's going to go right on the title bar. And a, good, and a lot of times you want to have a good title because a search engine is going to search looking at your title of your page. So you do want to have a detailed description of your page. So that's why it's always important to have. Now let's mark up. Let's see what we can do to make this a little more interesting. So in the body section, what I want to do is I want to have this section right up here. I want it to be highlighted a little bit more. I want to make it, it's going to be the title of our page. So I want it to stand out. So we have some common style tags out there that we can use. 
and that happens to be the H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. They all stand for heading tags. They kind of give you a structure. So H1 will be the larger, larger size, a little bit bolder. H2 is going to be smaller. H3 is going to be a little bit smaller. So it gives you kind of like a structure outline to follow. And all you do is you come in and you put in H1 and I'm going to put in a closing tag of H1. So each section of text you're going to have to put in a main tag. So since I want it to be titles you're probably going to use one of the H1, H2, H3. So let's see what the different tags look like. So I'm going to do an H2 for each of these lines. Again, don't forget to put a closing tag in. I'm going to put an H3 and I'm putting a closing tag. I'm going to do a file save. I'm going to come over here and click on refresh and let's take a look at what happens to the title section. Now it's standing out. Notice the title for Princess of Mars is a little bit larger. The next one down, a little bit smaller next one down a little bit smaller again. So now we're getting some structure. Some structure. Now when you have paragraphs of text within your body you have to use what we call the P tag to separate the paragraphs. So instead of pressing return, return's not going to work here. You actually have to put in the P tag to interpret that paragraph. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up here at the, in front of I am a very old man. I'm going to put the letter P in within the brackets. Now if you have spacing issues come up, don't worry about that. Um, it will look correct on your browser. And at the end of the paragraph, don't forget to put in a closing P tag. So Notice this first paragraph, I got P up here and a closing paragraph tag down below. Then I'm going to do the same thing for this next paragraph. Again, don't worry about spacing at this time. Don't forget to slash. If you make a mistake, that's fine. Go back and correct it. So I'm going to save this. Let's take a look and see if there's a difference here. I want you to pay attention to the paragraph of text over here, the main huge paragraph. And when I click on refresh, notice how they are separated with an extra line in between. That happens because we put the paragraph tag in. Now it's going to make it a little more readable. A little more readable. So again, all we're doing is we're taking a look and adding certain tags in to help to create our web page. Now once you learn some basic tags, then you can go in and all you have to remember is most of these tags, you're going to have a closing tag to it. So if I want to stress a certain area, um, a certain phrase, I'm going to come in here and uh, click right before the word Arizona down here in the first paragraph. I'm going to put in um, an attribute to the tag called strong. This will help us get a, a emphasis to being more bold. And I'm going to type in a closing tag. So notice again, I'm going to highlight this. Notice how I put the tag in strong and then a slash strong. So let's save this. Let's refresh this over here on the right hand side. And notice how the word Arizona gets a little bit more emphasis by making it bold. The key here is this is why it's called HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, is that you're taking your text and you're marking it up with tags. So you have to understand what the basic tags are for it to work correctly. So you, there's tons of books out there, the book for a class, um, that you can learn the basic tags as we're working with this. And some tags will, be, will become what we call as deprecated, which means that it used to be used for older browsers, but now we use something else. So newer browsers and newer standards indicate that we should use a different type of coding. 
And there's information out on that, and it does a great job of talking about it in the book and, and, and out there on the websites. So that's something to pay attention to as well. So here, all we did was I went in and I started marking up my document. I put in a doc type. I put in HTML and the basic, basic tags that we need for a web page. I also made sure I had the closing tags in. That's a key factor. If you don't, you know, what's really interesting is, is that if you forget a closing tag, it's going to screw up your web page. So, for example, look what happens here if I take away on the Arizona Hills. And I'm going to save this, and let's see what happens over here on the right-hand side. Notice how it makes every text the Heading 3 style because it couldn't find the closing tag. So I'm going to come back in, put the closing tag in, save it, refresh it, and now it's back to where it's supposed to be. If you happen to miss a bracket, like a less than or greater than symbol, that will throw off your browser. Your browser won't know what you're trying to do. So it's always key to make sure you're typing the code correctly. So in our next video, we're going to show you just add some, you know, add some other styles to it using a, what we call a style sheet. So here we got a basic understanding of the coding. Now let's go in and do some other things. Let's add an image. Let's add some color. So we'll see that in our next video.